So before we turned what was our bedroom into the dining room, this was um, the master closet. And in truth, 90 years ago, it was part of a back porch. And so uh, we took out the doorway and added the arch. Um, and uh, I have no idea who framed it in and when it was done, but it will be our pantry. And so this is what I have to work with. Um, yeah, it's got a really nice wood floor. It's actually hemlock, it's not fir. Uh, I've got to take these out. These were shelves for the closet. Um, it's like the rest of the closets in the house. Now this is from where we put our HVAC system in. I put a uh, heat pump in and I've got a head up in the attic. And so this is, these are the, the lines going up um, and then this is the drain line. While I was there, I ran some RF cable and some ethernet up. Um, and then of course foamed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this uh, with a box and then um, I will have a lower cabinet here and then two, two upper cabinets with an opening in between. But I'm gonna do it like a hutch. So I'll have the, the trim come in and marry the top and the bottom. There we are. So this is day one. Oh, this is the other side. There's actually going to be on this side where, as you can see, the worst place cabinet in the world used to be. We're going to put um, a cup cupboard. This is the very first time I'm using the 109 inch rail. I'm super stoked about it, but before I before I start cutting out um, or cutting down this piece of three quarter, um, I have to run it once uh, just to get this edge exactly in line with where the blade is. Um, God, I again, I'm not I'm not sponsored or anything, but I love my Festool track saw. I just really do. I can bust this entire piece of, of plywood down uh, in I don't know maybe maybe ten minutes. And it would take me forever to jiggle things around on the table saw and I wouldn't be happy th with the results and or I'd have to buy a panel saw at um, five grand and where am I gonna put that in the shop really happy here's what I mean by trimming the uh, factory edge is just a little long and that way you, when you use your saw it gives you the exact cut line um, you just need to trim it down that first time So what's wrong, it actually took 12 minutes, and in addition to the 109 inch fence, I used the 32 inch rail, sorry, um, and made really quick work of that entire sheet. And everything is cut perfect. Um, everything's square and it's the same, and that's enough for uh, a box to go around some, some cables and two upper cabinets, um, all the sides, done. I cut the three pieces out for the bottom cabinet just as quickly, just as accurately. I hope there is a special place in hell for the people that apply stickers to plywood. Ah! I got rained out a little bit outside as I was cutting and assembling, so I brought it. I brought it in here to the garage. So there's some of the pieces, and then this is the right half of the bottom cabinet going together with. Uh, the far right side, the middle piece, and then I'm, I'm doing the base now. A little more progress is the right side cabinet that just the box is together. A little more progress on the right side bottom cabinet. And uh, yeah, we'll get some more done. Uh, I'm gonna, it's like 11.30, so I'm gonna call it a night. If you've been watching me very long, uh, you'll know that I am super not a fan of using pocket screws for furniture and for cabinetry. Um, they, however, do have their place. And in a remodel job like this, where I'm putting new on top of old, um, this is this is a fine place for them. So. I swear to you, there's not a square wall in this whole house. And normally, I would have put this up and scribed 
but there's going to be interior trim here and then a mirror on top of that. I guess a mirror and then interior trim. So I didn't describe it, but this wall, this wall is better. Um, and then, yeah, that's what you get for 90 year old homes, 95 year old homes. They, uh, they move, which is how it is. So the end of the first day, it's it's dark outside. It's a school night, so um, I got to clean up. But pretty good headway. So this side of the bottom in, this side of the bottom in. I need to still put that panel in. This chase for all of that, all of that wire and um, HVAC stuff is in. I did the first quick float of the wall. I'm gonna sand and do that again. Get it nice and flat, even even behind where the cabinets go, because I mean, just because it's only going to show there for a minute or two, I I just the right thing to do is to float the whole wall, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I got the second coat on the wall after sanding. I think I'm going to maybe float it one more time, at least here in the middle, and then over here on the side. Uh, I mean, it's coming out flat, but I just, I want it to be seamless, so. Somebody got drywall dust everywhere. <laughs> okay, end of day two, um, just starting from scratch, and this piece is in, my hole cuts are in, I still need to reinforce here, but I have one upper cabinet in, and two upper cabinets in. Uh, including uh, going around this chase for the wiring and the HVAC pipes. Anyway, all right, well, I'll be back at it in the morning. I really recommend hanging upper cabinets with headlocks, and I know that these are for framing, but I really, really like how they hold cabinets. Um, I actually uh, insert a hole. Um, about an eighth of an inch in before I drop these in, but this makes it so the cabinets are super sturdy and you can swing off of them. After four months, I think I may have gotten my money's worth out of this particular <laughs> bottle of glue. Doing adjustable shelves in old school cabinets are not super hard to do. It just takes a little bit of work. Um... I actually learned how to do it this way by uh, by marking these out, drilling holes, and then splitting these. Uh, maybe 20 years ago, working on a house, doing a remodel, and the the people that that owned the house that was going to be a rental, what they wanted to do was to match the existing cabinets with the the new stuff. It was a really big kitchen, so we did this. Um, since doing that, I mean that was the first time I'd ever like built my own adjustable instead of using the metal rack type. Uh, but since doing that, I mean, I've learned two or three other ways to do it as well. Um, one of them is the way that the French do it is, uh, and if I had to do this by hand without a drill press, I'd probably do it this way, just with uh, with a saw. Um, but you can see, um, okay, here's a good way. So what they do is uh, the stretcher instead of being instead of being a, a stretcher with a round on either end, uh, it it hooks into this mouth and sets on uh, both systems are just as strong both systems work really well this uh, this way lends itself more to to a little more modern production with either a drill or a drill press and this is all I mean you could maybe I guess do it with a bandsaw and a circle saw but in truth it's just a lot easier and sometimes a lot faster if you're just doing a couple cabinets to do it by hand with a handsaw but here are all of the all the makeup sticks in order to do the uh, to do the adjustable shelves. Um, I've actually got uh, ten sets of two, so that's, it's enough to do five cabinets. And then I went ahead and milled up all of the poplar for the stretchers too. Well, that part's done. Just a few, few hundred holes or so drilled. 
one real quick so you can see the difference in kind of the manufacturing process here. So after they're split this way, then I turn them over on the backs and I split them this way. So that way I've got uh, a little more than a quarter inch here and uh, that's really all you need for, for shelves in a, in a kitchen cabinet. Now if I were going to do storage shelves in the garage or something, I'd use the full three quarter. But no, all you need is, uh, is half of that three quarter cut and uh, and you put them in the cabinet. In the butler's pantry and the adjustable shelf brackets are all in both the upper and the lower cabinet. I've got all my face frames cut um, for the three, the three lower doors that are going to be flat panel as well as the two upper doors which I'm going to put in some some wavy glass in the top. Um, I've got both the tops and bottoms cut and then of course uh, the styles as well. So rails and styles cut and I'm going to go ahead and instead of doing a traditional mortise and tenon um, I'm going to go ahead and domino joint these uh, with a, a little bit of a bigger domino and it's going to make it nice and beefy. So as, uh, as this joint ages it shouldn't sag in the least little bit. Now these doors aren't huge. I think my largest one is 17 and 8 by 25 and 7 8 And so they're not giant doors. They're not really heavy, but I still don't want them to sag. And this will make sure that they don't do that. I've got the first door frame that's going to have the wavy glass in it gluing up. Everything's square and uh, we'll let the glue set up and start with the next one. Both of the cabinet doors that are going to get the wavy glass and then one of the lower doors is there glued up and staying square. The other two are propped on the other side of the shop drying out. Uh, unclamp them tomorrow and start sanding and then uh, source the glass as well. All right, not a bad evening. As you can see, I am building the pantry and the doors in the pantry from some really high quality measured sort of Norm Abrams drawings, including some incredibly difficult math, um, advanced level stuff. <laughs> Very first test fit on all the doors went really well. Everything fits in properly. Um, also for the uppers, real happy how that's going to turn. I'm actually going to go take them and uh, I've got the measurements for the glass but I'm going to take them with me as well. I'm going to let them sit inside uh, for 24, 48 hours before, uh, before I take them out and trim them down and sand them. I want the glue to set really well. But these are going to be the flat panels. This one open this way. Of course these two open. There's no center, center style in there. Um, and then this is the the decking for what will be the black and white uh, granite that is going to go here. So, you know. I'm heading up to one of the glass shops in Seattle where you can get the restoration glass. It's um, uh, nice and wavy and the rest of the glass in our house like this window um, and then in the other cabinets is original glass and so I want to match that. And the theme with matching, I'm also going to stop by one of the reused places and see if I can get some hinges. Um, this is what I did with the kitchen cabinets, or the half that I rebuilt. Um, I, uh, I got original original used hinges, cleaned all the, all the old nasty paint off of them, and uh, so nobody, nobody will be able to tell that you know, they're new hinges because they're not. Um, for the pulls and everything for the doors, uh, I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to use instead of clear glass, which is what would have been in the house, um, we've gone to a red glass. This ruby, this ruby red. Um, I, I I just like how it looks better, and it's not a hundred percent original, but it it's a nice spin on original. So we've got the three inch handles, and then we've also got. Um, 
Also got some knobs and uh, everywhere else in the house, um, upper and lower, they run the three inch handles. But I think in this room, um, I'm gonna put some of the knobs in. Anyway, I uh, wish me luck, I'm off. So I'm here at Earthwise and I was about to go over to Wallingsford to pick up some restoration glass for the tops of the pantry. But uh, one of the employees here talked me into, hold on, maybe we have an old window we can cut up. Holy crap. So I have original glass, not restoration stuff, that um, I saved probably $150 on by listening to the people here. Um, if you got money to spend, do it here on restoration stuff. Like, again, they, they saved me time, they saved me money, and uh, really took care of me and cut the glass for me. I didn't have to cut the glass. It was awesome. I think this is a good place to pause. This, uh, this build has been a little longer than I thought as far as just time in, in filming. So I'm going to break it into two different parts. And uh, with part two of the video, I will fit and uh, hang the doors, put the glass in, also prime and paint, and we'll be installing the granite countertop that my wife has so lovingly chosen. <laughs> Thank you much. Again, I really appreciate uh, the fact that you've watched and that you, you keep coming back to watch. Um, please do me a favor and click down below and subscribe. It'll do me a solid. Thanks again.